Parliament Speaker Yanakis Omiru has lashed out against international lenders, accusing them of using Cyprus as a guinea pig in its planning to handle the economic crisis. Omiru was addressing a conference of Speakers of Parliaments from EU countries, which was held in Nicosia today. He deplored unfair accusations against Cyprus and its financial system, saying the Eurogroup members lack solidarity and understanding, which is an underlying principle of the European Union. The conference is being attended by parliamentary speakers of EU members and candidate countries and the President of the European Parliament. Mr. President, you are on one of the politicians, they know very well Cyprus for many, many years. You know the situation, the economics, the political dynamics of the, of, of the island. Can you tell us what went wrong with Cyprus? To, to, to say what went wrong, I think uh, the sovereign debt of the country is for sure a problem in relation to the GDP of the country and the banking system was oversized. But uh, this is uh, easy to, to, to say what went wrong. Uh, we are in a difficult situation and we have no time for the time being to, to ask what went wrong. I prefer for the time being to look uh, to raise the question how we come out of the crisis and what must, must we do now. You have several contacts in Cyprus. You met a lot of people. You met uh, also people from, from the civil society, from the economic uh, field. Are you able to come to any, any specific initiative from your point of view as President of the European Parliament? I think one suggestion I got today is a common initiative of uh, the Presidents of the European institutions uh, for a relaunch of economy in the country and to stipulate in Brussels a package of uh, concrete measures uh, to, to relaunch economy here taken uh, as an initiative, a joint initiative of the European institution. I think I, I will get back to Brussels with and discuss with my colleagues. But one very concrete point is 99% I was told of the structure of the economy are small and uh, middle-sized enterprises who have secondly a very enormous problem, no access to credits, uh, which is quite explainable in the banking uh, system crisis in which the country is. Banks in Cyprus can't lend money to enterprises and foreign banks are not coming to the country to uh, operate here. So a microcredit program or a credit program for small and middle-sized enterprises who have a lot, which have a lot of ideas to invest in the country could be uh, an immediate reaction to create growth and jobs in the country. And that's what I take uh, with me, uh, more or less this was Beside a lot of difficult opinions with the civil society debate I had here, one of the things in common is such a program could help immediately. There is a big question for, for many people, both in Europe and in Cyprus, whether we will be able to restart a, a devastated economy. This is what happened. I, I see this enormous uh, uh, risk uh, that in the follow-up of this uh, situation in which the country is, two things are combining, are combined. This is a depression, not only in the economy, also a depression in the mind of people. And uh, these uh, are processes reinforcing each other. A country which has a, a recession uh, is leading to unemployment, to stagnation, and that leads to a bad mood of people and to hopelessness. So we are in reality in the country in an extreme difficult situation that people raise the question, could we ourselves come out of the crisis? I understand, but one experience in history is there is always a way out. And uh, therefore one of our duties as European parliamentarians, I see it as a duty as President of the European Parliament, is to give hope to the country by concrete measures. And if, the, if the measures are even the smallest ones, if they are going well, everybody sees that it is going well, and then I think we can regain really trust and hope. Some of the people here are not in a position to have a clear picture of what happened and why we came to this end. Uh, many are blaming the EU about that. Hmm. Others are talking about the responsibilities of, of national authorities, of uh, the politicians in Cyprus. If it comes to that, 
will you be able to defend the decisions taken on the European level and what would be your recommendation for the uh, national authorities, your friends here? First of all, I used to be a representative of the European Union uh, which is blamed for everything. In Germany the European Union is blamed uh, to us uh, permanently money from the German taxpayers to pay for other countries. In Cyprus uh, the European Union is taken as a foreign uh, uh, power, an anonymous power which is ruling the country and nobody knows in which way and why. So this is uh, my daily life. The reality is another one. I think first of all the uh, problems of the Cypriot banking system and sector and the size of the banking system in uh, Cyprus was not decided in Brussels, it was decided here. Nobody in Brussels uh, had an influence on the uh, banking development in the country and that the country had a banking system which is in relation to the uh, GDP of the country too big and that in the country some of the banks, not all, but some of the banks paid 4.5% 4 interest rates to depositors coming from uh, outside was uh, enormous. In Germany I get from my deposit 0.3%. So uh, that was everything decided here. And uh, therefore the European Union cannot be blamed for this. But the European Union took not the appropriate consequences. If in a country a banking system is in the crisis, it should not be the ordinary taxpayers who pay. And the help we give to the country should not be bound to measures no country can at the end accept or ordinary citizens cannot, um, cannot fulfill what is re requested from them. So therefore I think uh, we should not blame the European Union for uh, the original uh, problems in the country, but for sure I agree that the European Union took not the appropriate measures. They said that it was uh, an uh, experiment, a way to uh, create a model on how to uh, solve issues with problematic banks. Do you think that uh, it was a, an experiment and they choose to make the experiment in the small member states and this is weak member states? Difficult for me to answer but uh, those who have this impression uh, I can understand especially after the president of the Eurogroup Mr. Dyson Bloom said this is a role model for the future he corrected himself then the other day but if the president of the Eurogroup considers the case of Cyprus as a model for the future then uh, this presumption that Cyprus was taken as an example how to treat uh, countries in the future, especially from the size of Cyprus. Uh, that is a thing I can understand and I have no judgment, no final uh, judgment about this, but that people raise the question, I understand. Many citizens might think that if this is the case, so what it's about, the EU is about only the big guys, the strong ones? The member states of the European Union have a right to be treated equally, uh, Cyprus as Italy or Germany and uh, therefore I insisted strongly that the measures decided about uh, Cyprus should not be different from the measures for other countries. Uh, if, a small, if you are a small or a big country in the European Union, all the member states of the European Union are equivalent and have the same right and therefore once more I repeat my feeling was that was the reason why I interfered directly the next day was that uh, Cyprus was not treated uh, like other countries and uh, it is never too late uh, I think for the time being uh, we have now the agreement uh, between Cyprus and the European Union about the 11 billion package but it uh, needs nothing if we will not achieve for a relaunch of the economy and therefore I get back to what I said in answering to a previous question. We need now a support for uh, small and middle enterprises because there's a long list of ideas how to create jobs, and how to create economic activity. We must focus on such ideas to relaunch immediately uh, the economy in the country. Going back to the national responsibilities, Mr. President, you have the chance in many occasions to speak uh, and to have direct contacts with political leaders in Cyprus who are a close friend to former president, you are a close friend to the new president. You know Mr. Omiru, Mr. Kargan, everyone here. 
Have you ever discussed with them that they need to take action on time? And what was their reply? Listen, I'm the president of a European institution. I'm not uh, here uh, to interfere in domestic politics. And my private talks with the people you raised, I will not publish. But one thing is clear. Sub is a small country, and the experience I have in small countries, like Luxembourg, like Cyprus, or Malta, and so in small countries, everybody knows everybody. And uh, in this, uh, and you are uh, meeting every day uh, on the street uh, uh, your friends and your enemies. Because in bigger countries, this is uh, more difficult. So everybody knows everybody, and everybody knows something about everybody. So this is very difficult for outside uh, people uh, to understand how such uh, societies function. One thing in Cyprus I know. Mm -hmm. um, the Cypriots are like, Cypriot politi politicians are like politicians all over in the world. They have their tactics, they have their presumptions, they have their things uh, in mind. Uh, they hide from time to time or they express from time to time. But my feeling is that in the country for the time being, people are completely the president, the ministers, the parliamentarians, who represent nothing else than the citizens, uh, have no uh, certainty about the future. They, there is a feeling of insecurity. And what we must do as Europeans is to... Uh, Tell to people here, to friends in political life, to private friends. Uh, rely on us. Whatever we uh, can do, your, the friends of Cyprus and Brussels, to bring back growth and via growth hope to the country. We mm. will do, and I will do. That's what I tell to Christophe as like to Anastasiades. What you, would you say to your friends? They say here in Cyprus that we can do it outside of the European Union, outside of the Eurozone. But this is an illusion. Uh, the country joined the Union, the economy of the country is linked to the Union. Uh, Cyprus alone uh, will uh, face more problems uh, than uh, within the European Union because in a worldwide economy and the global village in which we are living, even countries like Germany alone or France alone on the long run are too weak and Cyprus alone will not manage the problems of the 21st century. But I understand those who raise the question. And uh, therefore my answer to them is, as I said, alone we are not strong enough. But the question they raise in addition, why we should be in a union with our friends together and we have the treatment, uh, we have the, the feeling not to, to be treated like a brother, I understand as well. So, answer is, stay in the Union and let's change the Union instead to leave the Union and to be too weak alone. Last question. Cyprus has made a great investment on the EU accession and the accession into Eurozone. If we make an assessment today, 10 years after the accession, how can we justify the current situation of de facto deep division and bankruptcy. Um, if you make a balance of the last ten years, or well, nine years uh, since uh, Cyprus uh, joined the European Union, nine years uh, the economy in the country went very well. It is not so that Cyprus was from the earliest day a crisis country the other way around. A very long time it happened uh, that every year the development was uh, hopeful and uh, in a good uh, direction. Now we are for the first time in a real crisis. Why? Because of a crisis of the banking system in the country, we will solve the problem. And uh, the European single market, the economic power of the European Union is at the end uh, a better choice than to be alone. I want to be very concrete. The solution of the Cyprus question in relation to Turkey or the gas reserves in the Mediterranean. These are uh, problems we have to solve, but they are linked also to hope for a better economy, for a better life, for an easier life. The Papa Gusta question or the shell gas uh, question in the Mediterranean. There are not only problems for the time being and risks, there are also chances. 
And my feeling is the chances are within the European Union bigger than outside. Can I issue a message from the President of the only directly elected body of the European Union directly to our citizens? What could be in this uh, very, very difficult uh, economic situation? Solidarity is a, a question not only linked to give money and to solve a short-term problem. Solidarity is that we stick together in times of crisis. My message to the citizens is, I can't promise nothing except one thing, that I fight in Brussels with all my means to bring a, an element of relaunch of economy to the country, and that I'm here to listen. And I learned today from especially, especially businessmen and uh, people who are caring about the social cohesion in the country, that short-term measures for uh, relaunch, especially for middle and smaller enterprises, could be via the European Investment Bank, for example, feasible in the short term. And uh, don't give up, don't surrender. Uh, there will be, if we achieve in Brussels, to create solidarity by concrete actions, not only for banks, but only also for ordinary citizens, then we have light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Με σκληρή γλώσσα μίλησε ο πρόεδρο τη Δημοκρατία για το χειρισμό που έτυχε η Κύπρο από του Ευρωπαίου εταίρου τη. Η Κύπρο είπε αντιμετωπίστηκε από του εταίρου τη ω πειραματόζω για να εφαρμοστεί η θεωρία του κουρέματο των καταθέσεων. Κατηγόρησε το Eurogroup ότι ελέγχεται τι αποφάσει εκ των προτέρων και στη συνέχεια τι επέβαλαν στην Κύπρο. Ο πρόεδρο Αναστασιάδη μιλούσε σε δεξίωση που παρέθεσε στο προεδρικό μεγάρο προ τη των Προέδρων των Κοινοβουλίων των Χωρών Μελών τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση που συνέρχονται σε διήμερη σύνοδο στη Λευκοσία. Wow. Regrettably, this fundamental EU principle was not respected. On the contrary, decisions reached beforehand by the interested parties, parties sorry, were coercively imposed. As Platon has argued, do not expect justice where might is right. Cyprus was treated as an experimental guinea pig for testing the economic theory of enforcing a haircut on bank deposits and the consequent repercussions which were to follow, irrespective of the fact that there was reckless management by the banks affected and ineffective potential supervision of the banking system in general. I sincerely hope that this uh, precedent in relation to Cyprus is not going to be applied elsewhere in Europe, although, as it is well known, the main raison d'etre of a precedent is that it can serve the purpose of establishing norms and guidelines to be repeatedly and universally applied. Such an enhanced cooperation can extend democratic control and accountability to decisions reached at the EU level and provide greater transparency and openness in the decision-making process with the aim to improve democratic legitimacy, quality and efficiency of the legislative procedure of the EU. Most importantly, it can safeguard the principle of solidarity which constitutes the very essence of what the EU represents. It is paramount that our EU partners and institutions, as well as the political parties of the European uh, Parliament, refrain from putting forward any proposals which will lead to the upgrading of the illegal entity in the occupied areas of the Republic.